to your all love K-pop. If you do, welcome to this segment. The reason why K-pop are the K-pop musicians we love. <laughs> the reason why K-pop is loved all around the world. During this time, I, Sam Carter. And Niv will be closely examining and exploring K-pop through the musician's point of view. Oh, oh my K-pop. K-pop. Sorry, guys. I felt really hot in part one. I was really warm in this room, and I think it's gone to my brain. My brain stopped working. Sometimes we need a bit of changes in the yeah. openings that we do. Yeah, I yeah. loved it. My, my brain has stopped working right now, <laughs> listeners. I was reading Neve's part on the script. <laughs> Neve is with us today. How are you today, buddy? Hello. I am great. I can feel the coldness is approaching uh, very near yeah. to us. Uh, you know, I just heard the news that it's going to be very cold starting tomorrow. Yeah. Even today, it's, it's much colder than yesterday. Yes. Uh. Guys, if you guys are feeling the same weather as we are, you know, please mm. keep safe, be at home, you know, health comes first, okay, guys? A- absolutely. I, I, do you know what? From last week, I started taking uh, the subway because mm-hmm. I thought it'd be fun to take the subway again. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was cold today, so I, 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 warm really, I brought really warm clothes and mm-hmm. I realised inside it's very it's very warm yes. <laughs> so everywhere I go I'm like boiling hot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh dear oh dear um, alright guys we've got a show to do me and Neve. Um so let's talk a little bit about the segment yes sir we will choose the K-pop musician of the hour look back on their history from their debut till now and Sam and I will be analysing the reason why we think they're loved through our point of view yeah, we also need the listeners' participation during this time. Mm-hmm, of course, during the middle of the segment, Sam and I will be side tracks that we like by the artist. And then for today's K-pop musician, uh, send in a song by them you want to hear. Tell us the reason why you became their fan. And lastly, you can always send in your request for the K-pop musician that you want us to closely examine. We will actively reflect your opinions. Yes, we will. All right, listeners, um, we're going to start off with today's K-pop musician of the day. Yes, sir. So today's K-pop musician is the legend of the legends, uh, Boa. Mm-hmm. All right, a bit of information about her. In 2000, at the age of 13, she debuted with her first album, ID Peace B. Mm. Um, interesting name. With great dance skills for her age, she gained the top popularity as soon as she debuted. Uh, since then, she has been called Star of Asia, Asia Epil, and Britney Spears of Korea. Oh. 한국의 Britney Spears. Mm. She's the representative uh, Hallyu star, Hanyu, Hanyu star in Korea, and she's the musician who laid the foundation for the Korean wave. She made a great contribution to development of K-pop. She's an idol of idol and an icon of a role model. She's the current number one artist who is consistently growing up as a singer-songwriter, a vocalist, and a dancer. Let's check out Boa's music right now. Yeah, man. I mean, household name when it comes to K-pop. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so much for us to talk about, but let's um, get into a bit of uh, basic info. So she followed her second brother, who actually went to an audition. I didn't know this, actually. Oh. Only Poa was cast and entered into the path of being a singer. Mm. Now, during the SM audition, uh, there's a unique case that the staff members cast her as a dancer and Isu Man cast her as a singer. So she speaks three languages as well, Japanese, Korean, English. Uh, Poa thinks her language ability is something she's most proud of. And the fandom is jumping Poa in uh, Korean standard. It means Poa jumped to the wild. At the time, she was considered as exemplary case of debuting after being a trainee. And um, she's also one of the members of Got The Beat. SM Entertainment's female singer unit debuted earlier this year. Um, she has sung with absolute world-class singers, Westlife, Backstreet Boys, Akon, Florida, etc. And then senior singer, also a legend, Shin Sung Hoon said, If someone has to pick a Korean representative singer, I will definitely recommend Poa. Mm, agreed, agreed. Mm. All right, new music information. On November 22nd, 2022, her third mini album, Forget Me, was released. It's a hip hop dance song with a strong electric guitar sound, and it's a song that she participated in writing and composing. The lyrics are about blaming the person who is mistaken and determined while being stuck in a broken frame. She wanted to show you a performance that matches strong music, so she chose this track and revised the melody. Mm. And it topped the iTunes uh, top album chart in 11 regions around the world, including Japan, Brazil, Mexico, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Singapore, 
Taiwan, Romania, uh, and Philippines, Slovakia, and Turkey, proving that she's the star of Asia. There's a lot of countries. <laughs> She really is the star of Asia in mm. many different areas. Mm. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're talking about Boa today. I mean, what, what, where can you start? There's so much to talk about with I Boa. I mean, Boa is K-pop. K-pop is Boa. As long as I remember, whenever, like, uh, the first time that I... Got to uh, got introduced to K-pop uh, mm. uh, genre. Yeah, Boa was always always there. Yeah, and Boa was not like never unincluded. So she, she's always there for some projects or like uh, music releasing. Uh, she constantly contributed and just like keep on releasing her her own stuff, and that's very respectable. Yeah, and and uh, she's still doing it. I think that's that's the that's the strongest part of Boa's yeah. music. I career. agree. I agree. I mean, because mm. actually, she's only one year older than me, mm. right? She, I think she's born in eighty six, right? Mm. And but because she, she debuted at thirteen, mm-hmm. <laughs> she's had this 13. super long career. Like it feels like she's been around forever. Um, and you're right. I think that's the most incredible thing. Lots of child stars, they struggle to go on for a long time. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. even if you look at artists like in the US and mm-hmm. like kids struggle to go on for a long time, I think it's, it's, it's a crazy achievement that she's still, and she still makes music that's modern. She doesn't struggle with staying modern, right? Right. She still sounds like she's a 2022 singer. She sounds the same. Which is, which is crazy. She's a very strong individual as well. You yeah. Know, when you debut as like very young, like, Teenagers, it's mm. very too hard to keep it together yeah. just because you are swayed by all this K pop industry uh, flows, yeah. and it's very hard to just be yourself and just keep it together. And uh, the fact that she did it mm. uh, and still doing her, her own, you know, just striving uh, with her own career, yeah, that's just something else. It's, it's amazing, another level, another level. And mm. also, what I find also impressive is going to Japan at such a young age mm. as a kid, mm. uh, literally a baby, mm. uh, learning Japanese and debuting in Japan. That must have been so much pressure, but but and and hard work, yes. right? Yes, 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 yes. So um, there are so many reasons to love Paul. Uh, Lots of comments from you guys. Leonardo says she is ever-present, really meant a lot for K-pop and polarizing it. Still so young. Yes, absolutely. Still mid-30s, man. She's Mm. legendary, Wendy says. Um, Anastasia says, can Paul share her talents to us, though? She's literally an ace. I mean, that's the thing with her as well. Every part of being an artist, she's good at. She can write music. Mm. She can sing. She can dance. Like... It's just, it's, it's pretty amazing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's loads to talk about when it comes to Pua today. I'm very excited about this one. But uh, she has released new music, which I love. Uh, do, mm. Shall we go and listen to the new one? Yes, sir. This is called Forgive Me by Pua. <laughs> Poor Forgive Me, mm. Forgive Me is the new song, new title track for the new <sighs> album. Um, it just sounds like Poor. Like, her <laughs> voice never, never changes. The thing is with her voice, what I, what I feel about her voice is it's quite an iconic voice. Because mm. mm. it's so unique. No one sounds like her. Um, it just makes you, it makes you feel a bit nostalgic at the same time, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... it's huge huge respect for her for doing i don't know like keep on doing and keep on releasing her own music Mm. and every time she releases her own stuff it's somehow uh what's special about her music is that if you just listen to it um it doesn't it this is just my own opinion Mm. but it doesn't stick out like right away mm, but uh-huh. then it just sticks to your to your brain f- after a while yeah. and you just want to kind of want to listen to it again and again yeah. and again and then it's just like it becomes uh, that song yeah, in yeah, your yeah. head <laughs> you're right you're right I think that's really hard to pull it off I think her vocal as well that, that, that adds to oh uh, yeah what makes her song such a you know, in a unique sensation it's a feel yeah i think for for when you're to be a top top artist i think that unique vocal tone 
sets I think is really important. It sets you apart. It makes people want to listen to you again, I think. Mm. And she's mm-hmm. she's definitely got that. Mm. Um yeah, Benny says, love this title track and folks, stream the whole EP. Yep, definitely. Mm. Check out the whole thing, it's brilliant. Mm. Um all right, so we're talking poor today, listeners. Yes, please send in the song by them that you want to hear and also tell us about the reason why you became their fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we're gonna do next up, uh, by the way, we're doing uh, me and Neva video message for one lucky listener. Do keep that in mind. Um, so, I mean, she has so many hit songs. Like, yes. It's so difficult to pick um, just three. What we're going to do is listen to three um, that we think are important songs for her and uh, we'll listen and talk about them. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, man. Got oh. goosebumps. Mm. This song is called Number One, uh, the title song of her second full album, Number One, released on April uh, 12, 2002. It is an album that was released after a successful return in Japan and most successful album released in Korea. Yes. And the only album that gave Boa the grand prize in Korea and Japan during her career from both countries, right? Yeah. It's a Euro pop dance song and it's easy for people to miss. Because of the exciting melody, but the lyrics are about a broken heart uh, lamenting the moon in the sky. When the moon happens in the lyrics, that's that's what you have to listen to. And she's a big star who took over Japan beyond just being an idol singer, as her status uh, status has risen uh, as an icon of uh, the Korean wave. Number one in the title that uh, fits her status became popular at the peak of her career. And at that time, the shocking mesh outfit that showed the belly button was a hot issue. Oh. Yes, I do remember this. And she danced hard but did a live performance perfectly, completing the Im- image of a talented musician. Absolutely. Ooh. It's one of the first poor songs I listened to, I remember, mm. in, in England. Uh, my grandma sent me this album, actually, in the post. She really? sent me the number one album, mm. and I listened to it. By the way, a bit of info from Leon Taylor, most legendary K-pop song ever. Number one, first place on Melon's top 100 K-pop songs of all time. Oh. Chosen by 35 music critics and industry experts. We've, we've spoken about that before mm-hmm. here. Um, this is an iconic song, man. 2002. Do you, mm. do you, yeah, you were very young during this time. I was very young. I was nine years old, I yeah. think. Wow. Do you remember it, though? Yes. Yeah. Of course. This song was sensational. This song was just, it was playing everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere I go. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think, so I know a lot of singers and idols, singers, females my age, mm. lots of them love singing this at Singing Room. Yes. Because it's, it's that song they listened to as a kid, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's one of those legend, legend songs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it is such a beautiful song. I mean, what more can you say about it? It's, it's the biggest K-pop song of all time, probably. Number one. <laughs> Number one. Number one by Paul. Let's listen. So if number one, she sang when she was a teenager, Mm -hmm. we then go to this song, she grew up a lot. Yes. This is called Only One. Well, the title track of her seventh full-length album, Only One, uh, it was released on July 22nd, 2012. And this proved her production skills with the title of her first self-composed song. It's Boa's favorite song because of its popularity. Uh, It has a sad and dreamy atmosphere with a magnificent orchestration, a heavy hip-hop drum beat, and sweet piano melody. It's a lyrical hip-hop genre song, and the song itself is not fancy, but it was evaluated as a timely transformation along with the rise of her image through K-pop star. And the song that was ranked high at the time when all the mega hit songs came out, such as Sai's Gangnam Style and Big Bang's Fantastic Baby, Busker Busker's Cherry Blossom ending, Pakot ending, and yeah. Sistar's Alone, Na Hunja, Boa's song did really well. It did really good. amazingly well. <laughs> Do you know what I love about this song? I remember when it first came out, I was obsessed with this song mm-hmm. because like, we're so used to Boa putting on sort of I guess performance targeted songs maybe mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. this is all about the music 
which I really, really loved, actually. The performance was very simple for this song, uh -huh. too. Mm -hmm. And it showed a different side of her voice, I felt, a yes, little bit. Yes, and this is her you know, first self-composed song. I know, right? So I, I, we have to give a lot of you know, credits for, for this, because, <clears throat> you know, if, uh, there's always first for every artist, but then it's very hard to make the song become a hit. Song, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you try for the first time, yeah, <laughs> you know, she did it, yeah. Mm. Another good point about this that many people are mentioning here uh, Leon Terrace says, This song made the new generation of K pop fans know about her, and you can't forget the famous dance break which she collaborated with a lot of popular male idols. Jenga also says she performed this with so many different male idols. Mm. She's clever, she knows what she's doing, like that. That's always going to be a really cool issue for the song, too, yes. Um, of course, I said the performance is simple for this, but it's really beautiful if you actually watch it. It's um, simple but stunning. Mm. Um, yeah, Percy love this song too. You just want to sing along to it, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, right, this one's called Only One. <laughs> I say this is my favorite for our song ever. Mm. I love this song. I told you last week about yes. this song, didn't I? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. This is called No Matter What by Poa and Binzeno. It's a collaboration song that was released on June 17th, uh, 2016. It's the uh, 19th song of SM Station's digital music release channel Station. Bright and sophisticated tropical house song that goes well with the summer. And it's a song about a couple who wants to be together in any situation. Boa's unique vocal tone and Binzino's rhythmical rap, uh, rapping are combined. The lyrics goes, no matter what we do, no matter where we go around the earth, uh, just us two, light I believe in the power. No matter what we do, no matter what we do. Yeah, man. I gotta say, I just, I, I don't know why I love this song so much. I think it's the melody is really beautiful, mm. which she sings with so much feeling. Mm -hmm. At, the, at this time, the big trend was that Justin Bieber type kind of mm -hmm. um, this. Skrillex type yeah, kind uh -huh, of drop, uh -huh. you know? And <sighs> I got really obsessed with that kind of music. But for me, the first time a Korean singer did it perfectly, I right, thought. Right. Do you know right. what I mean? Perfect drop, perfect, perfect melody. This is it's beautiful. Pop. It's so it's beautiful, the right? Pop. Yes. And when I first when it first came out, I remember I think I just bought my new speakers and I listened to this song like ten ooh, times ooh. on on these speakers that I just bought. That I don't have them anymore because I, I upgraded again. But you know, and I just remember thinking it's so minimal, mm -hmm. but it's so upbeat at the same time. Mm -hmm. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. I, it's such a great this song. This is also my type of song. I, I can't listen to this like. All yeah, day, right? All day or night. Yeah. And then what's very cool is you got the queen of K-pop and one of the kings of hip, Benzino. Yes. Man. He's one of the hippest rappers you could you could find in also, Korea. Also, at that time, he was <laughs> charting the top, 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 top. Yeah. You know, he was a top rapper. Oh, I'm speaking of Benzino. Mm. He comes in here. Oh, so cool. Oh, the vocal production. Oh, left and right. Yeah. Ended. Oh, yeah. nice. Nice. Uh, no matter what we listen to before that was um, only one and number one that we listened to guys yes. from Poa. Mm -hmm. um, by the way we could have chosen any of her songs literally there are so many because um, Jenga actually does does say that surprise Atlantis Princess or IDP Speed didn't make the list but she literally has so many amazing tracks mm. You might play one of those later. Mm -hmm. You never know. Oh, maybe wait for it. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Leonardo says, sounds like a summer, but feel good music. Uh, Anastasia says, Paul's discography is full of gems. Um, honestly, there's so many you could mention. Can, so many. <laughs> like, for me, can I just throw out a couple more? I really love One Shot, Two Shot. Mm -hmm. One Shot. Two, two Shot, shot. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that song. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I love Woman. I think that's a great mm -hmm, song. Mm -hmm. That's a really good song. Oh, what else is there? There, there are too many that better I could... Than, make. Better than better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Better, yeah. better, better. Mm -hmm. Better's also great. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, we're just fanboying now. It's like a fanboy show. There's just like simply too many good songs that she released. Mm. It's just like simply, when we say like it's very hard to pick one song yeah. out of her, it's especially for Boa, it's, there's, there's so many songs that are yeah. so good. Yeah. Oh, do you know what just came to mind? 
Do you remember when what? she first went to America? Uh -huh. Eat you up. Oh. I'll eat you up. Uh, 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 do, 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 do. I always remember thinking, she, wow, she's so good. She also has like all like English written like yeah, pop yeah, songs yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. Like, yes. Eat See, that's what makes it so hard for us to choose yeah. one song. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of that, she's probably, she's got loads of Japanese albums. Oh. I mean, if, if you go oh. listen to those, it might, there's, there's too many. Yes. Eat You Up was underrated. I thought it was a really good song. Mm. It was mm. very good. It was very good. Um, right. Uh, me and Neve, we need to stop fanboying. Just stop fanboying. Just focus, yeah, control, focus, focus. Control. We're on yes. the radio right now. Yeah, we're doing the radio. <laughs> um, right. So we chose songs that we wanted to play for you guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Jenga says, yes, Eat You Up was amazing. I know, I know. Um, right. I've, ch I've chosen a song and I, I had to go old school a little bit. I had to go old school because, mm. I don't know, for... For someone my age, like, Paul, I remind you of um, when you were a kid starting to listen to music, right? And so I decided to go for the song called Every Heart. Mm. Every Heart. When you listen to this, you'll get, you'll get like goosebumps. Oh, I think yeah. the Japanese version of this song was really popular, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Every Heart, this is 2002. Oof. Yeah, this is 2002. 20 years ago, guys. Yeah. That's 20 years ago. 20 years ago, mm. just after the World Cup. In mm. Korea happened. Mm. So this mm. is in September time, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where you had uh, Valentia as the title. You had Every Heart, which was super, 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 super uh, popular as well. There's loads, actually. Oh, Listen to My Heart's really good as well. I love that song. Um, so Every Heart. Um, this one, the reason I chose this one is because at the time I was obsessed with kind of, even now I'm obsessed with this kind of medium tempo song sound, kind of R&B from this period, early 2000s. Um, even the style of drum, drums, you kind of get really nostalgic listening to them. Mm -hmm. And she's so young at the time. And she actually sounds similar to now. Like, I can't believe she sounds the same. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I don't think her vocal cords ages. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> um, it's simply an amazing song with a beautiful melody that you can sing along in no time. So uh -huh. um, it's a legendary song from her. Why don't we have a listen? So my choice is Every Heart. How is she doing those ad libs? <laughs> it that ad lib yeah. <laughs> as a baby. It's crazy, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing. Um, some comments on that one. Leon Terra says you need to also remember she was 16 when she sang this song. Perfect emotional vocals for such a teenage girl at the time. I, pff, I was just saying to Neve, how can she use vibration at, at that age? It's crazy. It's, and I said it's effortless. It's just, she doesn't even try. I don't think she tries. Yeah, man. Her voice is just like. What we call a fine wine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I it's, agree. It keeps on getting better. I don't know how she does it. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, amazing. Mm. Sinate says this song on repeat. I'll never tire of it. Her voice is just liquid gold. Anastasia says somehow her voice sounds mature, even though she's only a teenager in this song. That, that's what it is about the song. She sounds so mature in that one, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right. Cool. Um, so we have got uh, lots more to talk about when it comes to poor. We have um, uh, messages. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Let's go, mate. All right. Benny says, Good afternoon, Sam C and Neve. Happy Tuesday. Indeed, we will talk about an absolute dancing legend in both the Korean and Japanese markets. And it's Boa. And she made every fan proud of how she's still amazing in dancing and singing and now hosting as she's currently hosting a weekly music show. Uh, here are my favorite Boa songs. Moto, uh, Girls on Top, my name, a volunteer, oh. Kizak, Miracle or Destiny is translated. Number one, Hurricane Venus, game, Hurricane oh, Venus, yeah. game, one shot, two shot, starry night, featured by Crush, oh. and the Shadow, only one, one dream, featured by Henry and Key of Shiny, and Nil, waiting, uh, my sweetie, Milky Way, and Sarah. Uh, all are my huge favorites from her endless discography. Uh, have a great Tuesday, everyone. You show as well. Oh, man. I forgot about some of these songs, mate. Yeah. Hurricane Venus. Yeah, yeah man. That, that brings Venus. back. Yeah, that's crazy. Do you know what? You mentioned that she actually, as a dancer, she could almost just be a dancer. She's that good, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, she, she hosted Street Woman Fighter, uh, um, of course, when it the season one of it. And all the pro dancers... 
they they said we started dancing because of Poa. There were right. so many girls like that, right? She's like a a pioneer almost. She is uh, the the ex- she has that exceptional talent when it comes to dancing. I, yeah. I heard that she has the photographic uh, memories where she looks at somebody dancing like uh, ammu, like choreography, and then she remembers it. She can copy it right away. away. Yeah, yeah. I'm so jealous. That's that's about like the region of like geniuses. I think that's what makes her such yeah. a unique, yeah. uh, amazing pioneer artist. Yeah. You know. So she has a photographic memory. I have maybe a two second memory. <laughs> just, just, it's okay. I have like I, I I can't even count. I'm like an elephant. I just don't remember anything there. I can't even count as well. If you guys are watching, it's just uh, like it comes uh, from my one side of the year and, and then, then it gone. comes out. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. We're just, I, I we, try. We're humans. We're human. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Um, I've all got right. one here. Yes, Wendy sir. writes in, Hey, hey, Sam and Neve. Yay. We're talking about Queen Poa today. Uh, Poa has such a great and cool charisma for all songs, but if I have to give my top two, it would always be Only One and Ah Disturbance as well. Mm. I don't know why, but they feel special and precious to me. I especially love her performance for... Only one from Mama of 2020. I don't know how many times I've replayed it. You need to check it out. Thanks for reading and have a day as awesome as Poa. I remember seeing, watching that. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Mm, mm. Uh, I forgot about Disturbance, man. That's also incredible, that mm. one. Nice, thank you. Awesome. All right. Uh, Anastasia says, Hi there, Sam, Neve, and SKP team. Boa is one of the artists uh, that I just got to know after I got into SM's music uh, from their younger artist and realized that she's actually a superstar. Fun fact about her unique voice, she's actually, uh, she does several supporting vocals on her younger artists in the company like Temin and also directing Espa's remaster Dreams Come True. Oh. Oh, as a director. Oh, wow. Oh, because she's, she's, she's Izanim at SM. Oh, that's true. She's, she's, that's a, true. she's an actual director. She, she's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, another uh, raspiness uh, in a voice. I won't hurt you. You can't talk about Pua without mentioning her dance. Years have passed, but her move is as she just, no, debuted. That's true. She mm-hmm. just gets gets better and better mm. that's why I say like she's like a fine wine mm. alright I can't talk a lot about her songs but three of my favorites are Only One Milky Way and Garden in the uh, Air cause they brought me back to the old school pop music mm. which is right up my alley mm. uh, you guys should also listen to the remastered version of Garden in the Air and only one by Baekhyun and Gallant Ah, Gallant. Uh, they're priceless. Okay, my message is getting long now. Have a great week, everyone. You have a great week too, Anastasia. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, cool, I love that. Um, excellent. So we've got oh, we've got one more message. Oh, oh, wow, that's a long message. <laughs> Leon's Leon's written a book. This will be this will be the last one for today. Then mm-hmm. um, this is this is great. So we are definitely going to have a look through all of this. It says, "Good afternoon, Sam C and Neve. Today's artist, one of the most successful and influential Korean entertainers." the undisputed queen of K-pop. I was going to say that. What's even greater is that she's solo straight from the start. Mm. That's even more difficult Mm -hmm. because you need a special charisma, Mm. maybe, I think, yeah. Mm. Um, So recently she was active on variety shows, being the judge on Street Woman Fighter and Street Man Fighter. Also the MC on the music program, Music Universe K909. Her song number one was ranked first place on Melon's Top 100, K-pop songs of all time chosen by 35 music critics and industry experts. Mm. Now to talk about the new album. I really love it. I've been listening to it since it was released. I love the furious, powerful title track which opens the album, written and co-produced by Poor herself. It's a burning disc to haters and the narrow-minded folks that recalls recent headlines. Filthy guitars underline her raging vocals as she declares her own redemption. I don't need you to forgive me. It's a powerful introduction to yet another Poor era, a reminder of why she's still a force to be reckoned with. Uh, also took part in composing and writing lyrics for Sketch and Hope. Uh, the B-side that stands out for me is uh, Breathe with its intense bass and rhythmic drums throughout the chorus. How could it not? Pour a sleek and sultry vocals accompany the in, uh, instrumental perfectly and take my breath away. I can't do the whole thing, but um, what else does it say? Another standout B-side is Sketch. One of her other self-composed tracks, compared to Forgive Me and Breathe, Sketch is more laid back and bouncy. The synths instantly make me want to sway from side to side and Paula's vocals shine beautifully. 
And to wrap up, we've seen many facets of Paula over her 22 years in the music industry. She went from the sweet uh, debuting 13-year-old in ID Peace B to the confident woman of 2020 single Better, one of Asia's most cherished artists. Paula seems to have done it all. What else could she possibly have in store? But the Queen of K-pop does that title justice once more on this new EP, Forgive Me, which shines in its own way, making memorable additions to an already bejeweled discography. She'll forever be my number one, and I'd like to thank her for her active contribution to the K-pop music industry. Without her, K-pop would perhaps have taken a totally different path. Uh, someone I'd like to recommend is Waiting from her second studio album, number one. Um, it's one of her best hidden tracks. Amazing. All right. Well, Leo, I'm out of breath there. <laughs> That's oh. an essay, right? It was, it was there. an essay. It was a big it's review. It's a good essay. It was a music magazine review. I yes. like that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Leo. I you appreciate so much. that. Good. All right. Now, we're, we're the last part now, we haven't got that much time left, about two right. minutes left, I think. Let me just get straight into what I brought. This is called Atlantis Princess. Yes. I know Jenga mentioned about this, yeah. right? <laughs> so I, I said, wait for it. So I brought this song. I'm sure everyone. Everyone knows about this song. This is a uh, uh, song uh, that was included in the uh, her third album, actually. Mm. That was released in 2003, I believe, May. And this, by far, um, is one of the songs that I think the most innocent song. It talks yeah. about the innocence. Yeah, yeah. You know, these days we hear a lot about like love songs and broken heart songs mm. which is amazing I, I it's timeless but mm. sometimes i always wondered about like uh, maybe we can talk about something else other than love but then again there, it's like limited themes and like you know mm. stories to talk about and then this song came out and i was like so this song is about like she compares herself to atlantis uh a princess atlantis is like a, a, a country a city that's lost and, and forgotten in, in the myth. And she feels like she's growing up and she's comparing herself to this Atlantis princess that she just doesn't want to forget her um, her, her pure memories yeah, when yeah. she was younger. And, and can, she just wants to move on and like move forward and grow up, but then she doesn't want to lose her... Um, that, that the beautiful teenager, uh, innocent yeah. uh, side of her. And they just like perfectly compared uh, this theme and they, they just like digested it in the lyrics. And also it's like a dance ballad yeah. song. Yeah. And the melody, if we hear it these days, like let's say the song got released right now, this still would, in my opinion, would chart top maybe yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, it took the chance. Mm. First no place, doubt. no doubt. So this is timeless, timeless, uh, timeless theme, timeless vocal. This is, I think, uh, the. Uh, this is Boa. Yeah, this is just Boa. I love it. I just want to share with you guys all. If you guys haven't heard this, please just listen to this, and you know, please just share this word. With us. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. The perfect song to finish today. And by the way, Neve, uh, next week we're going to talk about an amazing girl group. Yes, we're going to be talking about the amazing girl group, Kara. I cannot wait for that, <sighs> listeners. All right, we literally run out of time. So that's yes. it. Neve, we'll see you next week. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Listeners, thanks for coming. I'm back tomorrow, same time, same place. This is Super K Pop. I'm your host, Sam Carter. The last song that we just mentioned there, Atlantis Sonia Atlantis Princess by Poa. And we shall say goodbye for now. Bye bye. Bye. Love you, neighbors. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. If you're interested in more information about the show Super K-Pop, make sure you go to the official homepage, that is www.adidangradio.com and check out the Super K-Pop page.